advocates for the other animals, we need to send a strong, clear, abolitionist message that being cruel, not being cruel, is not enough. Being kind is not enough. We are not here to beg for mercy or make a plea for pity. We are here to demand justice for our fellow animals. This is a non-violent march and along our route we'll be stopping at a few locations prominent in historical and current animal use. Starting with world headquarters of Unilever, then to London headquarters of Cargill, and then the offices of Marine Stewardship Council. Our journey will acknowledge the current plight of other animals and also explore what we can do today to help bring transformative change. We will be finishing the march right back here at Smithfield Market where there will be lots of animal free food for you to enjoy. <laughs> it's so good to see so many of you here. I know we have a lot of different groups and organisations represented. We've got Hans Abs. We've got those trying to end the killing of badgers. We've got anti-fur and anti-vivisection campaigners. We've got those involved in refuge and rescue. We've got our vegan outreaches. And of course, we have got lots of animal rebels here taking part in the two weeks of action. I believe we also have people here representing something very close to my heart at the moment, uh, free the NBR beagles. And they're doing such great activism up at Camp Beagle. It would take too long to mention all of you individually, but thank you so much for being here. And thank you for everything that you're doing. So today is an opportunity for animal advocates, activists and allies to come together in solidarity with our fellow animals. A chance to recognise that we are not alone in our fight against the systemic and ubiquitous oppression of those not born into human bodies. This is also a time to acknowledge the anger, the sorrow and the grief that we feel. And we should be angry. Anger is an emotion triggered by injustice. And there is no greater injustice in size and scale and duration than that inflicted by humans on the other animals. The sorrow and the grief that we feel are testament to how much we care. And if we didn't care, we would do nothing. And so perhaps we can learn to not only accept those emotions as part of our allyship, but also to channel them positively, to drive us to take action for those we stand with. As advocates for the other animals, we need to send a strong, clear, abolitionist message that being cruel, not being cruel, is not enough. Being kind is not enough. We are not here to beg for mercy or make a plea for pity. We are here to demand justice for our fellow animals. fight for respect. The respect of their rights not to be bred, used or killed 
for others' gain. The right not to be displaced from their homes, have their habitats destroyed, their families torn apart, and their resources plundered, for their right to be respected. A fundamental problem at the heart of other animal oppression and the climate catastrophe that is so detrimental to billions of free living animals is human supremacy and exceptionalism. This arbitrary hierarchy we have created with some humans so conveniently placed at the top means that our fellow animals are seen by most as less than, as property, as mere disposable commodities to be used as we will, to be consumed, to be worn, to be tested on, to be our laborers, to be our entertainers, to be killed if they get in our way. And so in order to build a better relationships with other animals, we must challenge human supremacy and exceptionalism whenever and wherever we find it, including in ourselves. Our fellow animals are all but invisibilized in our society. Their experiences often hidden away in confined cages, in darkened sheds, in sterile laboratories, in stinking crowded spaces behind high walls and barbed wire fences. Others are being oppressed in plain sight. Those bred to be bought and sold as so-called pets. Those that are being hunted and murdered. Those being forced to work for or entertain us. Those we call vermin because we think the earth belongs to us and so refuse to share spaces. Those whose homes and lives we destroy as we spread and sprawl our human-centered world to monopolize every part of this beautiful planet. And so, it is our duty as allies to bring the stories of those hidden away into the light, to make sure their experiences are seen and heard. We need to amplify their voices, to assist them in their resistance, and make no mistake, they do resist. We need to learn to coexist harmoniously with free living animals and leave them space to thrive and flourish. Other animal oppression is unthinkable in terms of the horror, unimaginable in terms of numbers, but let us not forget that each one of the trillions of those bred, used, displaced and killed every year is a unique individual and so what i'd love to invite each and every one of you to do today is to bring to mind one individual perhaps someone you know and have a relationship with perhaps someone you don't that's the, whose story has touched you and today i'd like you to keep that individual in your mind and in your heart and march for them and today speak about this individual with your fellow advocates Say their name, bring their story into the light, share their experiences and honor their life so that together we refuse to let the world ignore them and keep them invisible. Together we challenge the tyranny of human animal relations and say here today, we see you, we hear you, we will never stop fighting for you. until all cages are empty, until all are free. And so we will take a minute's silence to bring to mind these individuals and to honor the life of each and every one of our earthling kin who has suffered or will suffer injustice at the hands of humankind.
Thank you, everyone. So, is everyone ready to march? I'm not sure I'm convinced by that. Is everyone ready to march for justice? Yeah. That's better. Can we try one more time? Are you ready to march for animal liberation? Yeah. Right, let's go then.